Okay. <laughs> What's going on? I just can't. Uh, what? I just feel a lot of pressure for this episode. What we're going to talk about today is everything. Everything? Everything. <laughs> Seriously, though, what are we talking about today, Tara? Today, we are going to talk about selling, marketing, your product, your service. That is the lifeblood of your business. And it's probably the hardest part. It's the thing that people hear the most. That is where most businesses go to die before they even get started. Oh, it's so sad. But I also know if we can help people overcome those fears and concerns and help them figure out their sales and marketing process or system, it only takes one to bring their product or service to the world. And that will change their life forever. And it will change the lives of the people that they connect with. And we're not going to beat around the bush. It is going to be challenging. You're probably going to want to quit about 100 times. There is no, if you build it, they will come. So where do we begin? Okay. There are four different things that you want to consider when coming up with your marketing and sales strategy. So what we have for you today is we have the four P's of marketing <laughs> and sales. P, 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 P. Okay. So first thing you want to consider is your personality. For example, if you like talking like me, then maybe you'll do some direct sales. Maybe you'll hop on the phone and call a bunch of people. Maybe you'll do a podcast. Maybe if you like the limelight, maybe you'll do a video. If you're a little more introvert, what do introverts do, Tara? I'll tell you what introverts <laughs> do because that's more my area of expertise. Introverts are powerful personalities in the business space, but we might do things a little bit differently. So for example, I'm on a podcast. Was that easy to do? No, that was slightly torturous. The very first one that I ever mm, did. And I still remember. sometimes I'm like, ah. but well, you even you like things a little more written out. I'm like, let's go. Let's do this. And you're like, wait, wait, what are we going to talk about? Yes. <laughs> so even the way you go about doing it will be different as well. Exactly. So I like a little more structure. I like to plan things out. I like to finish things that are started. Justin's more here and there and all around, but he has awesome here and there ideas. And everywhere and she loves it. <laughs> He has a lot of ideas. He'll talk to anybody. He can bring the high energy where I'm more watching, thinking, being analytical. I would much rather be on a podcast than at a party trying to do sales or networking or hopping on a phone and saying, hey, you want to buy my thing? But I do enjoy selling on a podcast. I will do webinars. I will do websites. And so there are a lot of different things that you can do as an introvert, but we just might do it a little differently. Introverts also might do more blogging. and You kill on websites. Yeah, you might want to sell a product where you don't have to show your face whatsoever or your voice or anything. I would say there are two things that Tara really doesn't like. She doesn't like talking on the phone Ugh. and she doesn't like parties. No. <laughs> Those are like <laughs> no. the two main things, right? Those are the two P's that go with the four P's, which are phones and parties. No, thank you. If you call me, I won't answer. And if you want me to party, I will dread going. I might show up and then I'll try to leave as soon as possible. So it's funny. You don't even totally mind a podcast, but that might terrify some people. And you mm -hmm. don't even mind public speaking. No, I actually love public speaking. I love podcasts. I love teaching, but I like to do it in my way. Once again, it's not that it's about Tara and I. We're just using that as examples. What fits for you? Maybe you want to find people who are going to sell. Like you don't mind selling them the vision, but you don't necessarily want to be the one pounding the phones all day. Another thing to do with personality is your ability to handle risk. Justin has a really high risk tolerance. Mine was quite low. So we've both learned how to work together. So just your ability to handle risk will also really depend on the strategies that you use. Are you going to quit your job, have nothing in the bank, start this business bare boned and get going? Or do you have a job? Are you going to have some savings? Are you going to build this thing up slowly after work? It really Wait, depends that, that on how you our, like to you're go. You're going to our next one, Tara. Oh, oh sorry. But, okay, that, that's a good segue. What is the next P? The next our P four P's is... Tara can't read my writing. <laughs> I can't read your Don't writing. Don't you have these memorized? Come on. The second one is your personal situation. Are you working a job? Are you married? Are you single? Do you have income coming in? You Do have, you have monies. Any savings? Oh, you have no monies. Do you have capital? No capital. How much time have you got? So how might someone's personal situation affect how they go about doing their sales and marketing? Well, darling. Oh. <laughs> so, so, for example, if someone has a lot of time but they don't have a lot of money, they're more likely to do what we refer to as brute force marketing. In our first business, that's pretty much all we did. Yeah, we were in debt. We were in a pinch. You were out knocking doors while I was home with our new baby. We didn't have a lot of money. We had negative money. We had time. That's all we, we had. had. Time. I didn't have a job. That's what we were doing. And it worked amazingly. I mean, we got ourselves out of a hole pretty quickly because you were willing to knock the doors and I was willing to do everything else in between. Back was against the wall. And it's not that I love who, I mean, do, and does anyone love door to door sales? Um, I don't know. But yeah. I was willing and I was able to do that. Like my personality fit that profile enough to where I could do it. 
Another example of this is a guy I met the other day when I was playing pickleball, Bill, that started on the perfect bar, perfect bar. So Bill actually just retired. I think he sold his company for like 150 million. Most of you have probably heard of perfect bar. They sell it in just about every grocery store. Growing up, he had 20 siblings, like something crazy. Like, I'm not even joking. <laughs> Insane amount. 20 siblings. No, I'm not kidding. It was a lot. He had tons of siblings, and his dad got sick, and they used to travel a lot. They made these treats. His dad was a health nut, and they called them daddy balls or something. Like that. <laughs> that doesn't. Wow. <laughs> they obviously changed the name. He called it Perfect Bar. And he just went to every Whole Foods until he finally got someone who's like, these are pretty good. Go take some. And at that time, nobody was doing snacks like this. It took up fridge space. It was very valuable space. But he got someone to buy it. They loved it. People started buying them and then it just took off. He was telling me, he's like, man, I just hit the pavement. Like he did some major brute force to make that work. So once again, brute force marketing, basically you don't have any money. You're going to do whatever it takes. Make a list of people, start emailing people, start calling people, reaching out to all your connections just every day. Just start hitting it hard. And if you can do this, you'll succeed at anything. If you can go brute force route, you really can do anything because I would say it's the most challenging. But man, anybody out there who can do brute force, props to you. Anyone out there who's in a sales job right now, props to you. Anytime someone tells me, especially a young person, I'm working in sales right now, I'm always like, oh, that is the best. I wish I would have done that. If you can sell, you can really do anything. You really can. And once again, that's not something you have to do forever. But it's a great way to get going. And just like the perfect bar guy, he was more of the brute force personality, but his siblings helped him and they were able to do some of the other things that he needed in the areas that he lacked. Now, let's say you have a job, you have a little more money, but you don't have a lot of time. In this case, you may not be as heavily focused on putting a lot of time into brute force marketing yourself personally, but maybe you hire someone to do that for you. Or you create a video or webinar that sells your product or service for you. And you more heavily focus on paid advertising, such as Facebook ads or pay-per-click. So what if you don't have time or money or you want to be a little more frugal with your money? In that case, you can hire salespeople that work for commission only. Or you can partner with someone who can do the sales or is really good at marketing and is ready to implement. Like maybe you're the visionary, you're the idea guy, and they're more of the implementer. And you guys can figure out a structure that makes sense for you. Another situational thing that you might want to consider is do you have or need an office? I'm currently working with a couple who has always wanted to have a restaurant. And we spent quite a while looking for that perfect location for them. But between doing a lease and a build out and all the expenses that it would entail, it was just more than their budget could afford and a little more risk than they wanted to take at the early beginning. Now, I surprised Tara and I had these guys cater at her 40th birthday party. It was so good. So rather than go the restaurant route at the beginning and have all the high cost and overhead, I told them I should start a catering company. So that's what we've been working on. And they're just getting going. They've already had a few gigs. But without all the overhead, all the money they make, aside from the cost of the food, will basically be pure profit. This week, we'll be getting them set up with our review automation software, Five Oak. Help them get a quick 30 to 40 reviews from all the people we know who have eaten their food and loved it. And soon Google search and word of mouth will take off and they'll be off to the races with little to no risk at all. So once again, as you're coming up with your marketing and sales plan, do what works for you and your situation. You don't have to be like anyone else. And that's part of what makes business so awesome. There's a million ways to make a million dollars and being you is the best thing you can do. All right. A little cheesy, I know, but it's true. Did you see that? Oh, oh did you? <laughs> You're so funny. The third P is product. What platform or sales strategy is ideal for your product? If I am doing an e-commerce business where I'm selling a physical product, one that's visual, it might be a great idea to grow an Instagram or Pinterest following. If I'm going to be doing a coaching or education business, a podcast might be a great place to start. Where are people hanging out that are interested in what you have to offer? Is it a forum? Is it a Facebook group? We know a guy who started a company called Diller Socket that sold software to car dealerships. So his company was constantly going to trade shows and hanging out at places where people who own and work for car dealerships were going. Our son Brogan is really into dragon fruit. So he has an Instagram following where he can talk about and sell dragon fruit cuttings. But it would be really cool if he started a YouTube channel where he could educate people all on dragon fruit while selling the cuttings as well. The possibilities are endless here, guys. Endless. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the fourth P is people or peers, aka your competition, or as we like to say, your co-opetition. So this one is huge, and this actually might be the most important and the one you want to spend the most time on. And it's the most fun, I think. Why, Tara? 
Because you're, you're, you could to spy on other people's stuff. Spy on people. And see how cool and steal their from businesses them. are. I love it. <laughs> I think it's fascinating. The coolest thing about business is you don't really have to figure anything out on your own. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Like everything has already been done. Bill Allen, who bought my other business for me, he would always say, I do not have one single original thought. I mean, I don't think that's totally true, but he just heard what other people are doing and he did that same thing, but did what worked for him in his own way. What we want you to do here is pick three to five people that are in the same niche as you or doing something similar. Now, maybe you've already found these people in your initial research and coming up with your product, or maybe you're just already aware of these people or these businesses. But if you're not, that's okay. Easy peasy. Remember our good friend, Google? Uh, just do a simple Google search and look for other people who are selling a similar product or service as you. The goal here is to figure out the customer journey. How are they finding these people? How are they being marketed to? How are they getting to their website or their product? What are they buying? How are they buying? How much are they buying? Are they retargeting them? What is the process? What is the journey that customers are going through from being introduced to the product how many touches does it take to where that person actually makes a purchase? And how do they continue to have them as a buyer in their business? Now, you may not be able to quickly identify all the ways that every single one of these people are getting all of their customers. But you can still get a pretty good idea. Now, not only do we want you to look for, quote unquote, competitors, as we'd like to say, cooperators, because there's a lot of ways that you might end up working with these people. So keep that in mind. But also look for blogs podcasts, YouTube videos, where people aren't only making money doing the thing that you want to do, but maybe they'll teach you how they do it. So for example, if you're really into photography, I bet you you could find a lot of people out there that teach you how to create a business doing photography. Now, once again, if you can't find your exact niche, look for something that's similar. Business in general and marketing and selling your business is really just a matter of seeing what a lot of other people are doing, matching it with your personality and your situation, and deciding what works best for you. I don't want to call it a Frankenstein because that sounds kind of like rah, not well put together, <laughs> a little jinky. but you can really take bits and pieces of what other people are doing. Think about the things that you want to do and put those together. Come up with your message, come up with your unique selling proposition, as they say, but just go and those things will come together over time. And remember, you're modeling these people, but you're not copying them. That's illegal. So just model, learn, educate, don't copy. Well, I don't know if it's like illegal, illegal, but... It could be illegal. In a lot of instances, it can yeah. be if it's perfectly exactly like they did it. But the truth is, if you take bits and pieces from everyone, like no one is really coming up with anything 100% original, right? I mean, it's original because it's from you and you are special, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are very We're special. all original, right? So the way we're going to do something is going to be very similar. But the truth is, yeah, you could look at what something that someone's doing in a certain way and you kind of like that. But yes, Tara's right. Don't take someone's exact marketing message or their exact website and copy that exactly. But if you take ideas from a bunch of different people and then you make it your own, boom, bada bing, bada boom. And you're going to enjoy your business a lot more that way anyway. All right. So let's do a recap of recap, the four recap. P's. Number one, <laughs> personality. What are you into? What do you like? What are you naturally drawn to? These are important things to know and understand because they will lessen the friction points of you moving forward in your business, no which is important. Friction. No friction. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you on protest day? What's going on? Number two, what is your personal situation? You got some money. You got time. What do you got? You don't got nothing. Good luck. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Figure out what you do have. Everybody has assets. How are you going to use them? Yes, they do. Number three, what is your product or service and where are people selling it? Or what is the best way to sell it, depending on what it is. All right. Numero cuatro is people. Check out what your competition or your co-opetition, other people who are in the same niche or a similar niche, check out what they're doing. What's working for them. Write it down. Write them down. Give them a call. Maybe if you're single, ask them on a date. <laughs> and also, there might be some resources that teach you how to make money in the exact niche that you're trying to learn from. Check out a few of them because they're going to have different thoughts and you are you. So be you. I know Tara says not to steal. If you steal a little bit from everyone, no one will know who you're stealing from. <laughs> Do not steal. <laughs> Alrighty, that brings us to the end of another Millionaire University podcast. But before we go, we have a quick favor to ask you guys. Tara, do you want to ask the favor? People are 75% more likely to do a favor from a beautiful voice than <laughs> Where'd you get this an old scruffy man. Old scruffy man. <laughs> Okay, we would really love it if you would leave us a rating and review in iTunes, Spotify, wherever you're listening to this podcast. If it's been valuable to you, a rating and review would mean the world to us. 
and we will see you next time when we make Tara cry. Oh, no. <laughs> we will see you then. Adios.